comes to Russia's war aims, Russia is failing, Ukraine is succeeding. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. My name is AJ, I'm here to take you through a number of topics today. I'm going to be talking about how the military industrial complex is looking to make over 15 to 20 trillion over the next 10 years. And I'm also going to be talking about the real reasons why Britain's Boris Johnson and the EU's von der Leyen, why they went to India uh, and why they're selling arms and weapons to India. I'm going to tell you the real reasons for their visits. And I'm also going to be talking about a uh, few other subjects as well so without further ado let's get on with the show but before I start I just wanted to ask a quick favor make sure you like share and subscribe anything you can do to help support the channel and if you really want to support me you can join my patreon or you can buy me a coffee so before I get to that topic I'm gonna be talking about um, the Secretary of State Antony Blinken going to Kiev yesterday and this is the um, title today Russia is failing Ukraine is succeeding says US is Blinken I mean what the hell is this guy smoking come on does anyone expect to believe what Antony Blinken has to say I mean this guy must be smoking something really really heavy because this is not the facts on the ground. In every single paper you open up today, whether it's BBC or any American paper like CNN, Fox News, they will tell you that Ukraine is being bombarded, absolutely bombarded on a daily basis. I mean, they are doing hundreds of sorties per night. Um, you know, last night there was uh, lots of attacks all over Ukraine happening. Uh, they are bombarding Mariupol as well, in, uh, where the guys are stuck in that steel plant, and they are, you know, sending missiles all over Ukraine. Um, they are destroying all sorts of assets around Ukraine. Literally every single night, you see heavy bombardment, bomba bombardments going on all over Ukraine. Remember the time when uh, President Biden stood up and proudly said that. The Taliban are not going to be taking over Afghanistan and he said it's not going to be inevitable they will never take over Afghanistan over his dead body a few weeks later what happens Taliban takes over the whole country in Afghanistan and the Americans are seen running uh, with their tails between their legs and he had another Vietnam moment where they were literally rushing out of Afghanistan and absolutely ridiculous so do you expect people in america and the rest of the world to believe a word this admin says about ukraine is winning russia is failing this is reminds me of exactly the time in afghanistan they don't even look at the map they don't even see what russia is doing to ukraine you know they are here just spreading lies saying oh no don't worry russia is losing ukraine is winning don't worry guys don't worry and then next thing you know the whole of the Taliban has taken over Afghanistan and exactly the same thing will happen in Ukraine you a few days later you'll see um, Russia winning Russia taking more and more territory from Ukraine and weeks go by and you see Russia taking more territory and then suddenly Russia blocks off all of southern Ukraine from Ukraine takes over you know Odessa takes over western Ukraine and America will still be sitting there saying, no, no, don't worry, Ukraine is still winning, Russia is still losing, don't worry, don't look at the map, don't look, read the news, don't worry, it's all lies, it's all propaganda, Ukraine is definitely winning. Does anyone expect to believe this crap? Absolute nonsense. Everything is going according to plan. I mean, everything they have done so far, you just have to look at the map and see what they're doing. And they're not running against the clock, you know, they're not in a rush to do whatever they're doing. They're taking their time and they're taking their time. They're trying to avoid as much civilian deaths as possible. So there's no point rushing in and, you know, going in all guns blazing for no apparent reason. They are taking their time. Um, they are giving plenty of chances for the Ukrainian forces to surrender, you know. The US thinks this is like Iraq when they literally bombed Iraq to smithereens, took Iraq to the Stone Age in, in a week. Um, it's nothing like that. You know, Russia is taking their time and they're not in a rush. 
And anybody that thinks that Ukraine is winning and Russia is failing, you know, you need to you need to be looking at what you're smoking as well because you know anyone that believes that must be really really stupid I'm, I'm really sorry to say and Ukraine every single day they're asking for more money they're asking for more money from EU they're asking for more money from the US and the US and the EU are pretty much trapped they have no choice but to give Ukraine money and you can see here the US would provide 300 more billion dollars going into for into military financing eu is sending money because they want ukraine to win they and they can't be seen not to support ukraine they want to they want ukraine to win they want ukraine to cause as much damage as possible to russia and if they don't give ukraine money if they don't give ukraine weapons then you know Ukraine will badly lose and America doesn't want that and EU doesn't want that so basically they're stuck now they're stuck giving Ukraine weapons giving Ukraine lots of money and even though their own economy is suffering people are suffering we're talking about huge inflation issues all across Europe all across America and yet America and Europe are literally giving money away when their own people are suffering and a lot of people are suffering in the West you know th there's a huge huge issues with inflation the cost of living and here it is here you have the American um, presidency you know focusing on Ukraine you have the British president I mean Prime Minister focusing on Ukraine Boris is spending all of his time running around for Ukraine then you got the EU doing ex exactly the same thing it's absolutely ridiculous these MPs these leaders need to sit down and work out how they will fix the economy how they will help the everyday people how they're gonna reduce the cost of living it's absolutely ridiculous seriously i laughed when i saw this story rishi sunak is splashing out while people are choosing between eating or heating so as you know rishi sunak is completely completely out of touch with everyday people he's basically spending a lot of money building a brand new pool and his heating bills is going to cost him 13,000 pounds a year he doesn't care about that he doesn't you know it's a small change to him and his family his wife's a billionaire he doesn't really care and while the rest of the people are struggling to make ends meet people are choosing whether they want to keep warm or whether they want to eat while this guy splashing away on brand new pools spending so much money on heating pools as well spending three thirteen thousand a year and it's small change to him he doesn't really care what's happening to the rest of england while he's out there living the life of luxury and then you have companies such as bp and shell and it's been found out that bp and shell are still cashing in they're still making huge profits because the price of oil and gas has ballooned so these companies are still making huge amounts of profits and last year you know they made bumper profits BP and Shell while the rest of us in England and probably parts of the world have to basically fork out every last piece of our change uh, increase by increase our, re increasing our taxes and making us pay for higher electricity costs higher gas costs well these companies are getting away with it and they're still allowed to make you know billions and billions of extra profit out, out, out of our expense it's not fair it's absolutely ridiculous and you've got to blame Rishi Sunak for that as well as well as Boris Johnson so many of you will remember Boris Johnson going to India a few days ago and uh, he couldn't really come back with any trade deals or any good news but he did come back with this basically Boris Johnson offers the boost to arms sales trade with India in talks with Narendra Modi so a lot of you don't know that there is some sort of um, arms embargo against India and Britain doesn't sell its all of its latest gear to India same with Europe as well and I, I was looking at this article and I was thinking why did I why did Boris go all the way to India to offer this to India and then I saw this article as well EU agreed to broaden ties with Ukraine as war shadow talks and then I saw this 
The EU chief was expected to offer an increase of sales of European military equipment to India and relaunch talks and free trade deals. So I was thinking, why is Britain sending India lots of arms and same with EU? Why, why, is, why are they doing this and why are they meeting President Modi one day after each other? Because Boris Johnson met Modi a few days ago and von der Leyen just went and uh, met, her, met him yesterday. So I was thinking about this and I realised why. One of the main reasons, um, it's all about Russia basically, one of the main reasons that India cannot t cut ties with Russia because Russia is a huge uh, you know, military supplier to India. And one of the reasons that India has said that they cannot turn their backs on Russia because Russia provides them with a lot of military, um, hardware, uh, most of their gear is Russian, Russian gear. And we cannot break ties with Russia because you guys are not selling us weapons. Because Britain has not been selling uh, all the latest gear to India, same with Europeans because of uh, legislations, because of red tape, and the same with Americans as well. So India, India said, look, we cannot break ties with Russia. One of the, one of the reasons is um, we got China in our doorstep, and you, you've seen what happened in Ladakh. Um, so we have to, you know, make sure we don't what we don't put security, our own security, at risk. And uh, we rely on Russia on lots of military hardware, etc. So this is the reason why Britain has gone over to India and said, look, I'll tell you what, we will give you all of the military hardware you need. And, you know, I just we just want you to break ties with Russia. And the EU has done the same. And you have said to uh, Modi, oh, we will give you as many much military hardware as, you c as we can. There's no restrictions. So you can buy all of the military hardware for, 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 uh, from us and that means you don't need to rely on Russia. But obviously they don't understand India. I mean India basically said that probably as an excuse. Um, they were making up reasons not to turn their backs on Russia. You know even if all of these arms that Europeans are selling to India, British uh, selling arms to India, India is not going to change. They're not going to turn their backs on Russia. And one of these days, India will turn into a superpower and they will have all of the latest technology from the British, from the Europeans and the Indians are the ones that are probably going to be winning. So they played a good hand. Um, they basically used the Europeans and the British to sell more arms to them. Um, so they will have access to more technology from, from the Europeans. And I don't think... India will turn their backs on Russia. They probably said that to the Europeans and the British as an excuse. Um, they were coming up with loads of excuses not to turn their backs on Russia, and that was one of them. One of them, and they basically fooled the Europeans and the British to give them more hardware and weapons. And I'm pretty sure that the Europeans and British will go back to India um, later on and say, "All right, you've got a lot of arms from us. You've got um, lots of, you know, weapons from us." it's time for you to turn your back on Russia and India will probably say no it's all right no thanks but thanks for the weapons though we appreciate it you know I, I believe that's probably the reasons why they have gone to India over the last few days and Europeans and the British are doing everything they can to pull India away from Russia but they don't understand Indians you know Indians you know they haven't forgotten the colonial days and they know this is all a trap they're going to pull India away from Russia and then Russia, once Russia is taken care of, um, once China is taken care of, they'll focus on India. Because they're not going to allow India to become another major superpower because you'll have Russia, China, India, huge superpowers right next to each other, sharing borders and they do not want that. That's American and the West total nightmare. You'll have... 1.4 billion people in China, 1.4 billion people in India and you've got a huge, huge population in Russia and a huge land base in Russia and that's at least, you know, if you count all of the land and the people you know, you're talking about 50% of the world's population there uh, plus the land mass as well, 50% of the world land mass or between all three countries so this is America and the West's worst nightmare. They do not want um, India, China and Russia to come together. So they will do everything they can to push India away from Russia, push India away from China. 
and this is the, their first steps and they think by selling weapons to India giving them whatever they want uh, India is going to change their mind but, but I don't think so anyway let's move on so I'm coming to the main part of the story now and you can see last year governments have spent a total of two trillion on weapons last year this includes um, top spenders US China and India the UK and Russia accounting for 62 percent of the total sum so you can imagine the amount of weapons that you know were spent and this is two trillion over weapons of last just last year alone and this is going to increase and you can see how defense stocks um, defense stocks beat global market on expectations of higher spending and the defense stocks are pretty much going through the roof and they're making so much profit out of the war in Ukraine uh, they're also making a lot of money through heightened tensions with China as well and the whole world is basically spending money on weapons while you know they should be working together to try and fix the economy try and reduce the cost of living of of ordinary citizens but no they rather spend it on money they rather spend it on wars and it, it really is sickening uh, guys i'm i'm really shocked by this all so this article here i know one trillion reasons um own this defense play so so this article is trying to point out that the United States, as well as uh, all of the NATO members, will constitute a lion's share of one trillion in combined annual spending by NATO allies. So you can see, United States is pretty much going to have a gold rush over the next ten years if all of the NATO allies spend one trillion um, per year. That's 10 trillion in in 10 years and you can see the amount of money that the united states will make out of this and you can see some examples here um canada for instance is looking to replace its uh, cf-18 hornet uh, fighters and they're going to buy a deal worth 15 billion worth of um, lockheed martin f-35s um, the German Air Force is buying 35 Lightning aircraft and the United Kingdom Royal Air Force is on the track to purchase 47 of them. And here the United States, the White House, is asking Congress to approve $813 billion of military spending for 2023. Beyond NATO, European countries are beefing up their air fighter capabilities with F-35 as well as Finland, which borders Russia and now is act actively looking at signing the into the NATO treaty and is spending 9.5 billion on 64 units of the Lightning. Even historically neutral countries such as Switzerland is shelling out 5.5 billion for the F-35 jets. Aerospace spending is only a small part of the picture. Of course, countries are looking to boost their capabilities in other ways. Switzerland is spending another 2.1 billion for Patriot surface to air missiles and other countries are looking to stock up on Raytheon Technologies uh, anti formidable javelin anti tank missile systems. So you can see, you know, U US is literally going to get a windfall of NATO orders because of this war that's happening in Ukraine. Every single NATO member is now buying American weapons, and NATO is pretty much America. I mean, NATO is run by America, and the guy Stoltenberg is an absolute puppet. Uh, America is the main funder of NATO. They they control NATO, and basically, they are pretty much can force every single member of NATO to buy American weapons because what you have with NATO, all of your um, weapons have to be compatible with each other. So because they have to be compatible, US is saying you got to buy this, you got to buy the F-35s. It's compatible with this system. It's compatible with your Patriots. It's compatible with this, and they're going to use that war with um with russia and ukraine they're going to say look you you have um, a major security threat on your borders you need to buy this you need to buy this and over the next 10 years you can see nato spending 
one trillion per year up to 10 trillion dollars over 10 years and this is not the military spending that americans will, will spend i mean america is spending 813 billion per year on on defense and i'm pretty sure they're going to be buying lots of lot lots of weapons over the next uh, few years as well because they don't have, you know they got two threats to worry about they got russia to worry about they've also got china to worry about as well and china is their biggest um challenge yet so america will be spending a lot of money on defense over the next 10 years example as an example you can see lockheed martin posting 1.7 billion profit in the first quarter led by aircraft sales and i've showed you in the previous slide that so many nature countries are buying f-35s and lots of aircrafts and you can see here Lockheed Martin posted a profit of nearly 2 billion in the first three months of 2022, led by sales of aircraft and helicopters. And you can see here as well, so this article, uh, which is um, Ukraine war fuels the weapons, gold rush and defense contractors are already cashing in. So you can see. Though that the war may prove to be a tragedy for the world, one group is already benefiting from it, the US arms contractors. And they're also saying that, I would say opportunities for international sales, the tensions in Eastern Europe, the tensions in South China Sea, all of those things are putting pressure on some of the defense spending over there. So I fully expect that we're going to see a lot of benefits to it. And this is coming from the Raytheon um, CEO, Greg Hayes. And you can see here, even before the war, Pentagon was slated to receive at least 7.3 trillion over the next decade, more than four times the cost of President Biden's 1.7 trillion domestic Build Back Better scheme. And keep in mind that the, given the current state surge in Pentagon spending, the 7.3 trillion could prove a minimal figure. So this figure has basically been worked out before the war in Ukraine. So you can imagine how they're going to, probably going to be making at least 10 trillion over the next decade uh, because of this war and probably even more actually, probably even more because you've got to also count the American budget as well. And you could, the most of that American budget, military budget is, is based on um, military uh, arms production, research. And they also have to, you know, replace the inventories that are given, they're given away to Ukraine. Um, they're going to have to buy more jets for themselves, F-35s. They're going to replace old equipment with new equipment. So if 813 billion is the military defense budget, you can, you know, let's make an estimate. You can see that out of the 813 uh, billion, the, the, the planned increase in shipbuilding funds, uh, which is 276 billion. Uh, you can see uh, com companies such as Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon will make most of their money. Those firms already split more than 150 billion in Pentagon contracts. Uh, you got Lockheed Martin awarded 75 billion in Pentagon contracts in the year 2020 alone. So you can see a lot of money uh, from that budget will go to these arms companies and then if you add um, the 1 trillion per year uh, over the next 10 years they're going to be selling arms to NATO and Europeans and other allies other allies for example Saudi Arabia and you know there's lots of other countries that buy American weapons not just NATO so you got 10 trillion uh, for the next 10 years and then most of it let's say 500 billion uh, that United States States is going to spend per year on on um, on defense uh, contractors buying equipment and producing equipment, and so if you total that, that's at least 15 trillion over the next 10 years, and this is just a minimum figure. Uh, obviously, costs could escalate much much more. Depends on a number of factors like how long this Russia Ukraine um, war would go on for. And if there is a war with China, for example, this will escalate even more. So we're talking about 15 trillion to 20 trillion uh, that is going to be going to defense over the next 10 years. And it's absolutely crazy numbers, absolutely crazy numbers. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, this is ridiculous with the world 
suffering at the moment with all of these cost of living and economy you know it's worth just putting that kind of money towards you know making lives better for people but you know all that money is just going to destroy the world destroy people's lives you know push for wars it's absolutely sickening absolutely sickening and just to give you an example nasa only gets 20 billion you know they only get 20 billion for their budget and nasa you know sent, is sending rockets out into space and doing lots of uh, research into satellites you know looking to help expand the human race um trying to expand you know help with the with research with technology push human life out into space you know that kind of stuff is only there's only 20 billion of that goes into nasa but then you got 813 billion goes into defense and it's just you just have to look at the numbers it's absolutely shocking absolutely shocking anyway that's all i have time for today let me know what you guys think and i'll see you in the next video take care for now